All right, so I'm going to tell you something about Oscar. Um, that's the wrong button. That's the right button. Okay. Oh, something. Okay, so Oscar is written in a Lisp, and it's a, an architecture for cognitive agents, uh, based largely on my work in philosophy over uh, about 40 years. Uh, but I've only been working on Oscar for about 25. Uh, <laughs> um, it's really a hybrid architecture, uh, but I'm just going to talk about some aspects of the symbolic part of it. Uh, the basic motivation for Oscar is the pretty obvious observation that um, an, an agent of human level intelligence operating in an environment of real world complexity, which I'll call a GIA, uh, has to be able to form beliefs and make decisions against the background of pervasive ignorance. I mean, we're all GIAs. Think about how little you really know about the world, uh, in particular, particularly with singular facts, but also with general principles. You don't know very much. Uh, what you know is orders of magnitude less than what's true. Uh, so how do you handle this? Well, in light of our pervasive ignorance, we can't get around in the world just by doing deductive reasoning. We don't know enough. Uh, we've got to be able to draw conclusions that are reasonable, but that aren't guaranteed to be true. And that just means we've got to reason defeasibly. That's just the general definition of defeasibility. We've got to be prepared to take things back. Uh, so uh, GIAs are going to come equipped, or will have to come equipped, with inference schemes that tend to produce true conclusions, but aren't guaranteed to. Uh, and then they have to be prepared to take things back later. So Oscar is a general purpose, is based upon a general purpose defeasible reasoner. Uh, let's see. Okay. Now, um, I presume that a GIA must be capable of employing a rich system of representations, at least the full first order language. People would argue about that. But if we're really interested in human level intelligence, we certainly can do that. So I want a system that can do that. That, however, creates problems. As was pointed out in as early as 1981 by both David Israel and Ray Ryder. In a first order language, the set of the feasible consequences is not recursively enumerable. Um, if you make some reasonable assumptions, you can show that it's delta 2. Uh, what that means is you can systematically approximate it, providing you're willing to take things out of your approximation as well as put them in. And that, of course, is just the way human reasoning works. That is, we draw conclusions provisionally, and then we're prepared to take them out if we have to. Uh, now, when people think about uh, defeasibility, they, at least in AI, people are usually coming from non-monotonic logic. Non-monotonic logic is about what we might call simple defeasibility, the observation that if you add new information, you may have to take things back. Um, there's a further problem, though. Um, and that is, uh, in a rich language, argument construction is non-terminating. That means the search for defeaters is non-terminating. Uh, if the search for defeaters is not terminating, um, then you, uh, the, the computation of defeat status is going to be non-terminating too. Because there's always the possibility that you're going to produce further arguments without any new information, just further arguments that are going to make you take things back. So uh, this, in this sense, uh, the defeasible reasoning of a GIA is going to be doubly defeasible. Uh, this conflicts with virtually all implemented systems of defeasible reasoning. I think Oscar is the only implemented defeasible reasoner that accommodates double defeasibility. And accordingly, it's the only system that can reason in a rich language. All other defeasible reasoners are restricted to propositional calculus or horn clauses or something like that. Okay. Uh, now, uh, these observations have important implications for GIAs. Uh, this is really the main point of the paper. Um, they have the consequence that a GIA cannot be viewed as a classical problem solver. The reason for that is the reason is going to be non-terminating. I mean, that's just a characteristic of diffusible reasoning. When the, when the agent has to act, it acts on the best solutions it's found so far, but if it has more time, there's always the possibility that better solutions will emerge or that difficulties will be found for previously discovered solutions. 
So it can set problems aside if it comes up with reasonable seeming solutions, but it can't ever uh, forget them entirely. It's always got to be prepared to revisit them. Now what this means in terms of algorithms is, the algorithms involved in building a, a GIA are not going to be terminating algorithms. Um, that is, when we move from narrow AI to GIA, we shouldn't carry along the assumption that we're building something on the basis of terminating algorithms. We don't terminate. I mean, our reasoning goes on forever. Why should we expect the GIA to be any different? Uh, now, this, these observations so far are about epistemic cognition, cognition about what to believe. But I just want to illustrate that they have important implications for rational decision making and in particular for planning. Um, first of all, there's been a lot of excitement about high performance planners in recent years. Um, just want to point out what's probably obvious to everybody here that that work isn't applicable to building GIAs. Uh, the difficulty is it all assumes, and it's an absolutely essential assumption to the architecture of the planner, that they have perfect knowledge of the world. There's no way to relax that assumption in high performance planners. Uh, GIA will never satisfy that condition. Uh, so that just isn't going to be applicable. Um, now, uh, um, there's been a lot of work on decision theoretic planners. Presumably, a GIA really needs a decision theoretic planner, not a classical planner. Um, but work on decision theoretic planning is tended to assume that the agent has a complete probability distribution at his disposal. Well, again, in an environment of real world complexity, that's computationally impossible. Um, if that's required for building a planner, you can't build a planner. Uh, the way I want to handle that is by giving the agent the ability to reason defeasibly about probabilities. But, uh, and I've done a lot of work on that, but I don't have time to talk about that here. Uh, I think there's a more fundamental problem with existing planners, and that is that they compute plans. In other words, they run a program that grinds something out and stops. Uh, the input to the planning problem includes all the information needed to find a plan, and then they simply run a program that computes something. Uh, now, a GIA, first of all, can't be expected to come to a planning problem already knowing everything that's relevant to solving the problem. Uh, the defeasible search for knowledge is not terminating, so the planner cannot first solve the epistemic problems and then do the planning. Planning and knowledge acquisition have to be interleaved. Uh, now, it's an open question what form of planning should be employed by a GIA, but in the absence of the perfect knowledge assumption, the only familiar kind of planner that can be employed is something like a classical goal regression planner. Uh, I don't want to claim that's exactly the way planning should work in a GIA, but it's reasonable, I think, to suppose that the planner is going to be a refinement planner that first constructs a basic plan, second looks for problems or threats, and third tries to fix the plan resolve the threats. Um, okay. uh, the epistemic reasoning involved in searching for threats, however, is going to be non-terminating. Uh, so it follows that uh, the set of problem-solution pairs is not going to be recursive or enumerable. The result is that planning can't be done by computing plans. Uh, the computation could never terminate. So how this is going to work is that a GIA should be prepared to adopt plans provisionally by assuming defeasibly that there are no threats, and then withdraw the plans later or try to repair them when defeaters are found. So the logical structure of planning becomes indistinguishable from general feasible reasoning. Uh, my suggestion is that a GIA should reason epistemically and defeasibly about plans rather than computing them with some computational black box. And that actually is what my current research is about. I built a, uh, a defeasible classical planner, and now what I'm working on is a defeasible decision theoretic planner. Um, but that's a promissory note at this point. Um, so, uh, let's see. OK, so, OK, uh, this amount of slide. <laughs> OK, so, uh, as I said, the general architecture of Oscar has been implemented in list be downloaded from my website. Uh, <coughs> the architecture is fully implemented. Uh, that doesn't mean the agent is fully implemented. To build a complete cognitive system, the architecture has to be supplemented with inference schemes. Um, 
I have uh, implemented inference schemes, and again, they're available on the website for first order theorem proving. Oscar's a very good first order theorem prover. Uh, perceptual reasoning. Incidentally, it's a very good first order theorem prover that can work in huge databases. Uh, um, it's, um, uh, there are inference schemes for perceptual reasoning, temporal projection, causal reasoning, various kinds of probabilistic reasoning, and classical plan. And as I say, work on uh, decision theoretic planning is underway. Oops, well, okay, I'm through. <laughs> <laughs>